opportunity to welcome you for our Sunday service at ACK St. John the Evangelist and the sermon is going to be delivered by the then Kanan Joshua Abulo, the vicar in charge. We are going to have our psalm appointed for the day from Psalm 73, from verse 21 to 28. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you, yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterwards, you will take me into glory. Whom have I in the heaven but you? And on earth have nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, so is now, and forever shall be. Amen. Our reading comes from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, from verse 7 to 12. 1 Peter chapter 5 from verse 7 to 12. And it says, Cast all anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be self controlled and alert. You are enemy. The devil pulls around like a rolling lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Because you know that your brothers from the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. With the help of Silas, whom I regard as a faithful brother, I have written to you briefly, encouraging you and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. And this is what of the Lord.
greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning. My name is Canon Joshua Abulo, uh, vicar of St. John's Evangelist Igori. The title of my sermon is Scattered but Not Lost. Shall we pray? Almighty and ever living God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, my Redeemer and Savior, because this morning we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We thank you, Lord, for this is the day you have made, that you may rejoice and be glad in it. So, Jehovah, good Lord, I pray for my dear viewers, that as they listen unto the word, Master, speak, Master, speak, for it is in Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. I want us to reflect on some few things. And this is purely life after the ascension of Jesus Christ. After Jesus had ascended to heaven, believers in him had rough time. They were persecuted. They were jailed. Life was quiet and bearable. Life was quiet and unpromisable uh, uh, to them. In our reading uh, from 1 Peter chapter 5, 7 to 12, Peter writes to scattered Christians driven out from Jerusalem and scattered throughout Asia Minor because of their belief in the risen Jesus Christ. The family ties and the spirit of oneness had been eroded. Staying together was a myth because of the persecution and the emerging problems and issues as at that time. Fathers away from mothers, daughters away from their mothers, sons away from their fathers, Christians away from their pastors as at now. Throughout Roman Empire, Christians were being persecuted, tortured, maimed, and even killed because of their faith in the recent Christ. When Jesus was recommissioning Peter, he encouraged him to take care of the church and to tend to his flock. Peter knew persecution firsthand, for he had been beaten, he had been jailed, he had been persecuted repeatedly. Now here Peter comes with a message of hope, a message of perseverance to these scattered Christians. And now, today, this morning, a message of hope, a message of perseverance has been brought to us. Are we scattered as at now in our churches? Oh yes. Priests may be longing to see their flock. Christians may be longing to see their pastors every Sunday and even other days doing pastoral work, doing door-to-door -door ministry. Brethren, things are not adding up. Things are never the same. Yes, not persecuted, but troubled. Yes, not persecuted, but worried. To Peter, he had put anxiety at bay. He knew Christ and nothing could shake his confidence. Today, many people are shaken. Today, many Christians are shaken. Today, 
things are not the same. Brothers and sisters, if we really know Jesus, nothing should shake our confidence. At this time when the economy is limping, at this time when our education system has stagnated, at this time when weekly Sunday services are no longer there because of COVID-19. Peter wrote and passed a message of comfort and consolation to people who thought their world had ended and scrambled completely. He's addressing both the young people and the elderly. He had a message for all, a message for the rich, a message for the poor, a message for the elite, a message for people who are not school. He talked about worries, he talked about stresses, he talks about daily struggles which these people were going through. This morning, do you feel worried? This morning, do we feel worried? As Christians, as Kenyans, do you feel worried as a young person? Do you feel worried as a mother? Do you feel worried as a father? Do you feel worried as a student? Some people are leading stressful lives as Kenyans because business cannot pick up. Everything has stagnated. Are Kenyans struggling with life? Oh, they are being told, move to a higher ground because blood can come any time. You better move to a higher ground. And who belongs to that higher ground? That higher ground belongs to somebody else. Yet you are being told, move to higher ground. That one is okay. But even those ones who are moving to higher grounds, you are bound to meet opposition. Move to such a, such a school. But what of social distance? In a small school, where are we? People are struggling with life. Kenyans are struggling with life. Oh, we must minimize the spread of COVID-19 in our territory. Precise, precise. We must when we turn to God in repentance, despite life struggling, He will bear the weight of this struggle. He will bear the weight of this struggle. Letting God have your anxiety calls for action, not passivity. You better not submit to circumstances. But the Lord who controls circumstances. We was, Peter is telling the scattered brethren like us. He's addressing scattered brethren like us. He's addressing them and her, he has a word for them by telling them Cast all your anxiety on God because He cares for you. My dear listener, God cares about you. God cares about me. God cares about Kenyans. God cares about His church. God cares about those ones who are 
already COVID-19 positive. He cares. God cares about our mothers. God cares about our Christians. And that is why he's telling us that this is the time to say a lot. Time to be watchful. Time to pray. And why? Why be alert? Why be watchful? Why pray? Because the great enemy, the devil, is prowling like a roaring lion looking for somebody to devour at this time of uncertainty, at this time when we are scattered, at this time when we cannot have collective quality with our God come every Sunday. At this time when we cannot have our choirs with us. The enemy is roaring. The enemy is at war. That calls for being alert. That calls for being watchful. That calls for being ever on our knees to pray. Brethren, this is a time to stand firm against the enemy and be strong in our faith and in this noble call. Because of the daily occurrences, we are some people have become weak, some people have given up, some people have gone back fishing. Some people are not sure of themselves. Some people are not sure whether they will see tomorrow. Some people have given up. And many of our young people, many of the prominent businessmen and women, many of our top Christian leaders are living in fear. Some people think that the next flood will sweep them away. Because they are not certain when the rains will come again. Some people are living in fear because when the CS Health will announce the number of people who have been uh, found to be positive, you may be one of them. And this one has made people to live in fear. They think they will die and be buried in common gra graves. As it has happened in other countries. You may not worry about it because you will be long dead. But just imagine you being buried in a common grave like it is happening in other countries. And this is the situation in which we are in. We are not in the church this morning as we ought to have been because the Christians are scattered all over. Brethren, anxiety has made many of us to give up early in life and to lead a life full of regrets and sorrow. Life full of regret and sorrow as a young person. Life full of regret and sorrow as a learned person. Life full of regret and sorrow as a servant of God, as a child of God. And when this are happening, remember, it is not only in Kenya. Remember, it is not only in Nyanza. Remember, it is not only in East Africa. Remember, even the so-called superpowers have been affected heavily. Lost members of their relatives, family members have been buried. Friends, we are here at a time when wives and husbands 
are now living a path as a result of the lockdown. The scattered Christians were in the same scenario that we are in today. Some children will definitely lose their identity of their parents as a result of the lockdown. And this is the situation which we are in. Because you cannot go to Nairobi, because we cannot go to coastal counties because of the lockdown. But in all this, what a friend we have in Jesus. In all this, what a friend we have in Jesus. Yes, there is lockdown. Yes, people are living the problems. Even famine is looming. No food, no enough food for all of us. But God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient for us. The consolation message Peter had for them was, oh, it is just for a little while. Then what next? Just imagine you are going through a problem and you are being consoled, you are being comforted, and you are being told just for a while. Peter was telling these scattered Christians just for a while. And today, this morning, I'm telling you the message is just for a while. After you have suffered a little while, after you have missed family fellowship, after you have missed coming to church, after you have missed listening to our great choir, what next? After all this, what next? He's promising us three key things. He's saying he will restore you. Secondly, he will support you. Third, he will strengthen you. After all this, after you have missed all what you have missed, after you have missed going to the places you have decided to visit, after you have missed the friends you, you, you have decided at least to visit and to chat with, just for a while. He has promised such restoration. He has promised us support. He has promised us strength despite all what you have missed. And finally, He will place you on a firm ground. Praise the Lord. So selling them finally after all of this. Finally, 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 He will place you on a firm ground. Finally, finally, He will place us on a firm ground. Finally, finally, as men of God, as women of God, as people who love their God, He will place us on a firm ground. What a joy. A firm ground where COVID-19 will be a thing of the past. A firm ground where flood will never displace us and destroy our farm. A firm ground. Firm ground where worries and anxieties will be erased from our lives. A firm ground. Firm ground. Brethren, as at now, the ground is not firm to the rich people. Brethren, as at now, the ground is not firm to the superpowers. Brethren, as at now, the ground is not firm to the elites. Brethren, as at now, the ground is not firm to the medics and scientists. Brethren, brethren, as at now, 
the ground is not firm for theologians. Brethren, as at now, the ground is not firm for our daughters and sons. Brethren, as at now, the ground is not firm for our husbands and our wives. Brethren, as at now, the ground is not firm for our head of states. And this morning, I want to encourage you, despite all this, it's all about Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who can make a difference in our lives, who can erase our anxieties, who can make us have a new beginning. It is all about Christ. Let us cast all our anxiety and worries for him because he cares. It is all about Jesus Christ who can carry us shoulder high amid challenges and make us stand on a firm ground. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. prayers, prayer for the nation. Mighty God, you rule all nations and direct them according to your will. We pray that you will guide our president, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, and his deputy, William Ruto and their entire cabinet secretaries and all the leaders of our country so that they may always use the authority which you have given them for the peace of the world, the benefit, honor, and development of our nation <coughs> and to the good of your holy church. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, let us pray for the church and the needs of the world. Almighty God and eternal God, the only source of power, grant to our bishops, pastors, and all the peoples of our churches your health giving spirit of grace. And in order that they may truly please you, pour on them the continual dew of your blessings. Grant this for the sake of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for the needs of our people, and especially those who are sick in various hospitals, having tested positive for the coronavirus. We pray, Father, that you may touch them in your healing hands. We pray for those who have been affected by the floods in different parts of this country. Lord, that in their distress they may find hope in you. And in their anxiety you may comfort them. We pray for the health workers in this country. That you may continuously renew their strength and empower them with wisdom and knowledge to perform the task that you have called them with commitment as it is a service to humanity and as well a service to you. We pray for the lonely, we pray for the persecuted, we pray for those in different pains, that Lord in their distress and pains you may heal them. This is our prayer, O oh, faith, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, may the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ fill you with all joy and peace and believing, that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>